Okay, so I know that I said that I would give the non-tinted version to my mom and test it out and do the before and after photos and everything, but guess what? I hated the tinted version so much that I ended up giving it to my mom and I took the non-tinted version for myself. But don't worry, they do have the same ingredients and my mom loves the tinted version. So I guess we're good. So yeah, my mom has the tinted version now and she actually loves it and she's wearing it every single day and I did take the before photos so I will make another separate video. I will do a different thumbnail so that you guys can know that that is the video showing the before and after photos. That is coming soon. I'm just still waiting because they have a claim that it reduces dark spots after four weeks. So I cannot take the after photos before that. So be patient and today I am going to do a full review of this non tinted each correct let us put say sunscreen and of course I do have a review on the tinted version you can check it out right here if you're interested in the tinted version yeah go watch that video now if you watched my tinted version review then you would probably already know that I did not like the tinted version that much so as much as I hated the tinted version that's how much I love the non tinted version so as in every video I'm going to go through claims active ingredients UV filters I'm going to show you a demo application of the product also I need to try to layer it because you know layering is important when it comes to sunscreen and I'm going to test it how it acts underneath makeup so let's start with the claims okay so the claims are the same as the tinted version except that it does not give you coverage so that's the only claim that is different it's anti-aging because of the hyaluronic acid it removes dark spots and it provides you with a broad spectrum protection so you get the UVA and UVB protection in this product so pretty much the claims are uh, the same as with the tinted version the only additional claim that the tinted version had was that it was giving you coverage you don't get coverage with this one but you get all the other claims included okay now let's check out the active ingredients I I compared the ingredients of the non-tinted version and the tinted version and pretty much they do have the same active ingredients, same UV filters. The only thing that is different is a couple of solvents are different and of course in the non-tinted version there are no pigments. Other than that everything is the same and the active ingredients are the same. So we have niacinamide, phenylethyl resorcinol and low molecular hyaluronic acid and pretty much those three ingredients back up the claims that I mentioned earlier. Hyaluronic acid is low molecular so that means it will be able to penetrate deeper into your skin and reduce the appearance of wrinkles so there you go anti-aging claim is backed up but of course keep in mind that this is not long-term anti-aging not long-term wrinkle reduction that wrinkle reduction is going to last only until the hyaluronic acid is degraded in the skin but yeah it is a claim that is backed up by the ingredient so I cannot say anything about that just keep in mind that it is not long-term wrinkle reduction okay next ingredient and we have niacinamide now that is a superstar in skincare you probably already heard of niacinamide it does a lot of stuff a lot of good stuff for the skin you know it's anti-aging anti-acne it does brighten the skin and it can reduce dark spots so yeah definitely niacinamide is a great ingredient to have in your product it's a superstar around here that ingredient can fade dark spots so that claim is again backed up and the most important ingredient here is phenylethyl resorcinol now this one shows moderate results in reducing dark spots so it can reduce dark spots the only concern for me here is the same one that I mentioned in the video about the tinted version and that is that this sunscreen does not have a limitation on how many times you can use it uh, throughout the day so that means that the concentration of phenylethyl resorcinol must be very small in order to make it safe for reapplication during the day because you know it's important to reapply sunscreen if you do not re reapply it throughout the day then you might as well not wear it at all Okay, maybe that's a little bit too exaggerated, but yeah, it is very important to reapply sunscreen. So of course they had to make this product safe for reapplication. So something's gotta give, you know, did they include a high enough concentration of phenylethyl resorcinol that will be able to reduce the dark spots? We shall see when the after photos of my mom are done, then we will know. But yeah, for now, that is my only concern that maybe it's not going to be effective in reducing dark spots but definitely the ingredients are here the ingredients that can do that are included will they be effective we shall see 
Okay, now let's check out the UV filters. So as I said already, this one has the identical UV filters as the tinted version. So we have Octacrylin, Evo Benzin, Ethylhexyl Triazone, and Mixoral SX and Mixoral SL. Now, Mixorals are of course the stars of the show here because these are the L'Oreal Group Exclusive Agents and they are very photostable. Mixoral SX protects you in the UVA range and Mixoral XL protects you in the both UVA and UVB range. Now, these are great because L'Oreal saves these two UV filters for the higher price range products. For example, they were not included in the L'Oreal Day Cream, um, this one right here. I did a review on that one. I was hoping to see those in that day cream, but nope, L'Oreal saves them for a higher price range product. So, so they are included in this sunscreen and they're also included in the shock of fluid and the invisible spray. And uh, yeah, so these are the great UV filters. And then next to those, you have Octacryl that is you know not that strong but it is more so here to stabilize Evo Benzin and Evo Benzin is a great UVA filter provides you with a proper uh, protection in the UVA range but it's not that stable and then octocrylin is going to stabilize it and then there's ethyl hexyl triazone which is a very good UVB filter so yeah overall the UV filters are great and you are going to get a broad spectrum protection here and an SPF of 50. Now I want to add another category in this video and that is is ingredients that is not included because I think that some people are going to like this I guess because I know that you know some people really hate alcohol in their products so this product does not have alcohol so there you go if you are against alcohol in your product then you can maybe try out this one but as you know already I am not against alcohol in my products Shaka fluid has alcohol invisible spray has alcohol and I actually don't mind that because alcohol makes those cosmetically elegant formulations and the lightweight formulations on the skin so so the texture of this one is not as liquidy as the shock of fluid and as a spray yeah that could be because of the alcohol I don't mind it I will get to the effect later on I just wanted to mention in this separated segment of the video that no alcohol is not included and if you hate alcohol then this is a product for you now I have to add another category and that is controversial ingredients or in this case this one only only has one controversial ingredient Ingredient, and that is fragrance if you're sensitive keep that in mind because fragrance is listed last here I don't mind it my skin is not sensitive to, to fragrance and now I'm not using retinaldehyde anymore so I can handle a little bit of fragrance in my products when fragrance is listed last I have no problems using that uh, product but yeah I just like to mention everything for you guys and yeah this product does have fragrance just keep that in mind in case you're really sensitive to fragrance in your products okay now that would be it regarding the claims and ingredients now let's see how this product acts on the skin okay so I'm starting off with the shock of fluid by La Roche Posay because I'm using this one as my eye cream and at the same time I'm protecting that area from the age correct sunscreen because age correct sunscreen cannot be applied around the eye area so be careful of that and make sure that you protect your eye area beforehand and yeah shock of fluid is very gentle around the eyes and it can be used around the eyes so yeah that's why I'm using that one and now let's see how this age correct La Roche Posay sunscreen acts on the skin so when it first comes out of the pump it looks kind of thick but it's not it's actually very lightweight and when you first start spreading it it looks as if it's going to leave a white cast but actually the white cast disappears very quickly and it does not leave you with a white cast because it's very easy easily blendable so once you blend it in it is completely invisible so I really love that as well and here's how it looks after the first layer so as you can see I'm not greasy looking I'm not too shiny looking it barely gives me a glow and a really subtle one so when I perform the touching test my skin feels very well nourished and moisturized so this is going to be great for anyone who has dry skin and after this I waited for around 15 minutes and then I applied another layer on top so this is the layer number two this sunscreen layers pretty well I had no problems with the second layer it didn't peel and it didn't look overly greasy so yeah I pretty much had no problems with layering and after I blended it again it uh, did not give me a white cast it was completely invisible and my skin was very well nourished and moisturized when I performed the touching test I had the same results it was very well nourished and moisturized so overall 
the sunscreen layers pretty well. Okay, now let's see how the sunscreen acts underneath makeup. When I wear foundation, I usually mix these two because Brush Dry Healthy Mix, for example, is too dewy and the Revlon Color Stay is too matte. And then when I mix them, it just creates a perfect uh, texture for my skin. So those are the foundations that I used today. And here is how my face is looking after applying foundation pretty well. I would say pretty well. I did not have any issues with this sunscreen as a makeup base. Yeah, looking pretty good. Now I did want to set this with RCMA No Color Setting Powder and I always first set my eyelids and when it came to setting my face, I realized that actually my face did not need setting. As you can see here, my face is not greasy looking, not overly shiny. So I basically could have gotten away without setting my face, but because I was planning on doing a full face of makeup, I ended up setting my face just a little bit with this RCMA No Color Setting Powder because if you want anything to blend well on top of your foundation, you have to set your face pretty much if you're blending powdery products. Okay, so anyways, after this, I went ahead and I finished up my face makeup and here is how everything is looking in the end. So pretty much, I would say that this is a great makeup base. Of course, it's not going to be as long lasting as a primer and sunscreens are never as long lasting as primers, of course, but I would say that this is a pretty decent makeup base and that makeup blended really well on top of this and yeah, everything looks fine. Okay, now let me give you my final verdict on this each correct non-tinted sunscreen. As much as I hated the tinted version, and if you watched the previous review, then you probably know how much I hated it. So as much as I hated the tinted version, that's how much I like this one. Yay! I like this one, yes. Okay, now let me first talk about the pros. So pros would be that it is really lightweight, even though it looks thick when it first comes out of the pump, but it's actually not. It's very lightweight, it spreads out really easily. At first you can see a white cast, but it disappears very quickly and it does not leave you with a white cast on your skin. It moisturizes really well, my face feels really nourished and I can definitely tell that there is low molecular hyaluronic acid in this. Also, it acts great as a makeup base, so I love it because of that as well. I would definitely wear this one and then add another layer of foundation on top then you know spend two hours of blending the tinted version on my face just yeah so yeah, definitely I like this one better than the tinted version. Another pro would be that this did not make me look greasy during the day. This does have one ingredient that has oil absorbing properties, this one right here. And that's the same ingredient that was included in the Vichy Dry Touch. I have a review right here. This sunscreen is completely mattifying Vichy Dry Touch. So yeah, it does have one ingredient that was also included in the Vichy. So I'm assuming that that ingredient is helping with this sunscreen not looking too greasy see throughout the day so that's another pro okay now regarding the cons to be honest I do not have many cons for this one maybe one con would be that it cannot be applied around the eye area if we can consider that a con yeah I always use the chocolate fluid for around my eyes so I don't even expect a sunscreen to be safe for around the eye application usually they're not one real con could be that it this might not deliver the expected result because of the concentration of phenol at the resource and all. The point is, this might not be as effective as the serum that is specially formulated to target, for example, dark spots. So I would definitely recommend you guys, if you do have problems with dark spots, maybe get something else to treat those dark spots. For example, the anti-pigment serum by Eucerin. This one right here, I do have a whole playlist on this one. You can check it out right here. Now, that one is really effective in treating dark spots. Really works, I tested it. And I would maybe recommend and you guys, if you're struggling with dark spots, to maybe get a separated serum that will address that concern, that skincare concern, and you know, just focus on the sunscreen to protect you from the sun. So yeah, that's the only thing that I can show you as a real con here, that it might not be effective in reducing dark spots, but of course, I will wait for the after photos so we can see exactly if this can reduce the dark spots, because I assume that that is the thing that you guys want to know the most. But other than that, I think that this is a great product. I'm truly loving the texture and how it acts on the skin during the day and how it acts underneath makeup. So overall, I think this is a great product. So yeah, there you have it. That would be my final verdict on this new La Roche-Posay sunscreen. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye.